Good morning, everyone. I am Mukesh. I go by pronouns he, him, or his. I work for data sciences and analytics with one of the US retailers, Target. Today, we are going to talk about some of the modules in Python and how to go about that. So these are some of the modules which we are talking uh, today. First one is OS module. This is what, like this module provides some of the functionalities which we use to interact with our operating system. And there are some high level operations which we do and we have created one more module on top of OS module which is shutil module. So the difference between OS module and uh, shutil is that when we are doing uh, some uh, file transfers or folder transfers, using OS module, we can do those operations uh, where source and destination are in the same file format, right, F uh, formatting system. And whereas shuttle, even though the destination uh, file formatting system is different, it will still does work and will not give any error. So that's the major difference between OS and shuttle model. And we are also talking about send to trash module, which provides us an option of uh, sending files and folders to trash while deleting. So this is also called a safe deletion option. And then we are talking about zip file. Zip file, uh, you know, like, you know, when uh, we are able to transfer files and folders across systems, or let's say I want to send a file over an email, right? So uh, what happens is if the file size is heavy, it takes a lot of time to load, or sometimes we may not even able to send it across the network. So what we do is we compress the file and then, you know, send it, right? So for that, we use this module, which gives us functionality of zipping the file, reading the zip files, and even extracting the files. And we come later, we move on to traceback, uh, which talks about exceptions. You might have already know what exceptions are and how to handle it. But here, today, we are going to talk about the exceptions you create in order, uh, like, you know, in your programming. So this is not the system generation exceptions, but you are creating exception based on condition. And then how to handle it uh, with the traceback as well. So that one and login in like login helps you to debug your code better. So we'll talk about that. So these are the high level uh, concepts which we are going to talk today and we can get into it right now. So in OS module, some of the frequently used commands are get cwd, all small. So what get cwd do, do is, like you know, if you already know Unix command, it is similarly as pwd, present working directory, right? Here it is called as current working directory. We'll get to know which location are we in right now. And similarly, there are other commands like mkdir to make, to make the directory. And if you want to make multiple directories or at the time, that is make dirs. So I'll talk about the difference in little while. And we have something remove if you want to delete some file and we have rmdir if you want to delete a directory. So uh, it is important to understand what do we give inside here, right? Let's talk about that. And when you do current, uh, when you want current working directory, you will get something like this. Let's say you get content. So this is the root directory and you're inside a content folder, right? If you get this output, 
that means you are in this particular folder right now. So whatever operations you do right now, if everything happens on this folder or within this folder. So if I say mkdir, right? If I like so that would be mkdir of and sample so in the inverted commas I've said make directory this is a command which you run on your uh, interactive shell so mkdir what I'm saying is inside I'm giving the complete path either you can do this or you can just write sample I will show that as well you can say in content folder I want to create a folder called sample so what it does it creates a folder called sample this can be achieved this can be achieved even by doing this mkdir of sample so this will also create uh, the folder sample within this content. Why? Because we are already inside this folder. See, this is when you know where exactly you are and you want to make operations, you assume that you are already in here and start doing your operation right away there. Sometimes you might be confused where you exactly you are or you want to play safe and give the exact address to create the folder, then you will say make directory the path what you want here in the root uh, folder. There is a folder called content. Within that content, you want to create sample. Then a sample folder will be created. Now, let's move on to make directories. Again, all small. So what we do, similarly, let's say, I will again give the co complete path which is content I will say sample 1 and subfolder 1 subfolder 1 so what it does so in this particular uh, folder you need to create sample 1 and a subfolder but is sample one present right now in this particular content there is only one directory which is sample so if I want to create sample one and subfolders using this mkdir then I will have to do it two times how I will say make dir sample one and then I will get into the a folder of sample one I'll talk about how to getting uh, how do you get into the folder little while uh, so you will have to get into that sample one and again do that command make directory of subfolder one make directory of subfolder one so it is a st two step activity instead uh, we use this option where I'm saying make directories of sample 1 and subfolder 1 what it does is it looks for this uh, particular folder if it is not there it will create that folder and within that it will create this folder as well so it is creating uh, two folders in one instance right if you want to do similar things if you give the same folder structure to make they are there will be an error and it will not do anything whereas if you use make directories it will create all the folders at the same times which are not available I hope that is clear to you between mkdir and make directories and now next let's talk about remove okay what is remove remove is something uh, like uh, some command which is used to remove some of the files so there are two uh, delete commands okay one is remove one is remove directory so remove removes the file 
remove directory removes the folders so you need to be very sure before deleting it because once it is deleted it is deleted permanently okay so you need to be careful with these two commands so again what I will do is again you will give this command and it is always suggested to use the complete path while deleting file or folder even though you are sure you are within a particular folder it is always advised to use the full path of the fo like file so that you are sure once the delete is done you are sure that your file which you wanted to delete is deleted and not something else which had the same name as this so let's say in a sample we had a file called okay test1.txt I will give the entire path to remove that file okay so you say remove command and you pass the path of the file to remove and it removes it and the next command similarly is for remote directory and you need to make sure like for example let's say test one is still existing in sample and if you if I want to delete sample folder you cannot delete it because there are still files existing in it so remove directory works only when the folder is empty okay so how do I do it same thing you will just specify the full path to the folder in content I have something called sample I am deleting it so this command deletes the directory this command deletes the file and make dir is for creating multiple folders at the same time mkdir is creating one folder at a time and get cwd is to get the current working directory okay these are first set of commands let me move on and okay I was also talking about chdir right chdir is the command to do change directory so I will say either I will say chdir into content sample let's say because sample is already deleted let me go with sample 1 okay I am in sample 1 or you can also say chdir sample sample 1 so this will directly take me into sample because I am already in content if I am not in content and elsewhere it will throw an error saying the folder is not present so these are the basic commands or I would say widely used commands from the OS module and you might be wondering if this is syntactically correct if you have got that doubt or if you are sure that there is a syntax error here then you are right so these are the commands I hope you have got what is the command and how do we pass a variable to it now how does it work on python so if you want some this to work first we will import the module os and then i will each time i will say os dot command because i know this command exists within this module so i need to call it like that So when I do this, this command works and you can try this in your interactive notebook. If you have got this, let us move on to shut, like, like you might call it shuttle, but it is shutil uh, module. Let's move on to that. Okay, I'm gonna write 
the commands directly so that you get the syntax as well as the functionality of it. So right now I am going to use shut which is sh util all small okay and then I want sh util and also let me import os because sometimes uh, so we, some of the commands we don't have in shutil so we still uh, combine it with os commands as well so I'm going to write one code first and then let us talk about what exactly it is doing Okay, let's talk about the copy first. So what I've done, I've imported uh, shutil and os because I would be using both the modules in the, this phase. And what I'm doing first is, first, I like you know, if I do the get cwd, uh, it will be sh showing me content because I have not gone into any folder. Say I'm in content, and then I've created the folder called sample data. How do we do it? You just saw a few minutes back, you create using MKDIR. So I'm moving into sample data. And let's say uh, sample data already has multiple files in it. Now I want to copy a file or multiple files to a different location. I'm not moving it. I'm just taking a copy. Let's say we are taking backup. Okay, how do I achieve it? There is a function called copy within the shutil library or module and then we'll be using that command. So shutil.copy again the path. See the path remains same. The way you give path for any of these functions remains same. Okay, if you are getting confused, this is in Unix system. If you are using Windows, your path might be different. So you need to check that before using this. Like for example, if I am doing some of the operations on a Windows system, my path might look like this. So you need to specify the drive where you are working. So it might be the drive, your username and desktop documents or downloads, whatever it is. And then you go to the content like, you know, or any other folder and whatever you are doing, right? So your Windows path looks something like this and your Unix path looks something like this. So don't get confused. Both of them are absolute paths. There is no referential path here. This is also absolute. This is uh, in Unix system and this is in Windows system. If you are using online uh, Python notebooks, you are already on a Unix system. So your path will be like this. So that's the reason why I am using the Unix path and not the Windows path. But if you still have installed the notebook Python notebook on your desktop, then your path will change like this and keep a note of that. Okay, so let's come back to copy. Uh, so you give the path, so this is source, 
where you are copying the files from and this is your destination. So I'm, what I'm saying here in this particular command, what I'm saying is copy, copy what? I'm saying go to the folder content within the root directory, content and sample data, get into that and I've put star. Star denotes everything which is in sample data. Okay, and then what I'm doing, move these files to content and there is a folder called fold and push all these files or copy all these files into this folder. So once this command runs, uh, like the sample data folder and the fold folder will look exactly same because I've copied all the content from sample data to fold. This is one. Let's say I don't want all the files, simply instead of star, you mention the file name. Let's say test1.txt. You might be observing that each time I am writing the full path just to be safe. And this is a forward slash. Test this thing. And I will close and my destination So what this does is it copies the test1.txt from sample data folder and it puts into fold folder. So the fold folder now will have one single file which is test1.txt. Now what we did was we copied the file as is. So the name of this file will not change when we have copied it to fold. Let's say I want to copy the test1.txt and uh, rename it while pasting I want to rename it just as test or any other name for that matter. How will I achieve it? Instead of just giving the folder path I will be writing the file name as well. Okay. What this does is in, it copies test1.txt, it pastes into this folder called fold and renames it as test.txt. Test1 became test here. Both the files are same but now names are different. And why do we do that? Because so many other times we copy for different reasons and we will, whenever we copy the files, most of the time we don't keep the same name. So this is how you use the command to rename it while pasting. Instead of copying as is and renaming the file, it is better to rename the file while transferring itself, right? So that's how this works. And if you have got this, let's talk about next command. Copy tree. SHUtil has a command called copy tree. Yeah, copy tree. Why it is used? Like, let's say this can be achieved in a different way as well, but I will tell uh, talk about it now. So in the first command, if you remember, I'd use star to copy all the files and folders from sample data to the fold. Okay, so I'm using star. Sometimes this will, okay, this one all the time will copy all the files and folders within the folder sample data. Let's say sample data had one more folder. Within that folder, there are files as well. So you will not be able to uh, copy that using the copy command, right? You can, you have to do multiple instances. You need to get into that folder, use the copy command to paste it to the destination. However, it is simplified, right? The same command is simplified in the command copy tree. What does copy tree do? Is 
it copies the entire folder structure from one path to the another. Like, let me write the command as well. Again, I am using the same folders like sample data as my source. Okay, and then I want my destination folder as fold itself. If I run this command, what happens is it copies all the structure of sample data and pushes it into the fold folder. So all files and folders, subfolders, subfiles from sample data is copied to the fold folder at a go in an instance, right? So instead of this, you can do this and you can achieve what you want in single go. So that is the importance of the command copy tree. So till now we spoke about we spoke about the commands to copy. Let's say I don't want to copy any file or folder, I just want to move. Again, that can be done using the command move. So you don't have to worry, most of the commands are self-explanatory and straightforward, so it is not difficult to remember the commands. So I will say, in shuttle, shutl module, move command, I will say move the file of test2 .txt into the fold folder. Okay, what it does is it moves the test2 file into fold folder. After I run this command, the test2 file will not be there in sample data folder because the command I've used is move. Okay, this is done. So here I am copy moving this file into the fold folder as is. I'm not changing the file name. In case you want to change the file name, you can still do it like we did before in copy. So it's very simple. If you specify a particular name in the uh, destination, it will uh, create it as that file. Otherwise, it copies or moves as is. Okay, so this was the uh, main commands of shutil copy, copy tree and move. I hope you have got this and I'll be moving on to the next one. I'll still keep the import as is because the entire session we are talking about some or the other commands from these modules so we would need both the modules imported okay i will write next set of commands and talk about it and whatever command everything is in Everything is in smaller case and uh, if this is also small l, I am used to write in small l like this. So don't get confused with the case. All the commands which we are writing are in lower case.
Okay. These are next set of commands we are talking. Now we know what are all the major commands in SHUtil and OS and we learned some of them, right? So next in the list is os.list directory. Now we know uh, get cwd gives me the current folder. Let's say I am in sample data because we were doing it. Okay. Okay. So now when I'm inside this sample data folder and I don't know what that folder contain and I want to or I wish to see all the files and folders within that folder. How do you do it? Is this list directory, right? Get into the directory or if you're not already in sample data, how do I get in? I use chdir. So chdir will get me inside the folder and then I want to check what this folder content. I use the command list directory list dir. So it gives me all the files and folders within this particular folder which is sample data. So now I'm within sample data, uh, a sample data directory and I know what are all the files and folders available within this. And while removing, right, what does remove do? It removes the file. What does, how do I remove directory? I use rmdir command, right? So I had told that you cannot remove a directly, like directory, unless you have deleted everything inside that. So if let's say have 10 or 20 or n number of files within that directory, how do I delete that directory? I cannot delete all the uh, files, let's say 100, all 100 files by giving that remove command, right? I can still do it, but I will not want to do it manually. So there is a command, right? So what is that? There is a remove command, right? I can, how do I achieve this deleting 100 times? Can you think what, how can you achieve this? What method you can use? If you are thinking you will use for loop, then you are right. What I will do, I will use the for loop to uh, like, you know, using the list directory, I get all the names and put it in a variable and I traverse that variable to number of times the files are available and delete it. So with one for loop, I can achieve it, right? And we are talking about one more command called unlink, okay? Unlink also deletes the file, okay? So what I'm doing using this, so unlink, you use similar like remove os.unlink and the file name. So if I want to delete all the files, right? All the files from this folder sample data, I will use this for loop. What I'm doing for file name. So the file name here is my, what? A variable, you're right. So file name is a variable and in, I'm saying in os.list directory. What is this doing? It is giving me all the files and folders within this. Okay, but let's, for this instance, let's think there are only files in this directory. So it is getting all the file names. So everything is fed into the file name and we have entered the loop. So, and next I'm saying, let's say if I want to delete only certain files, then I can give one more command in the loop, like if file name dot, okay, file name is my variable, so file name dot end with, right? End with is a command again, 
is it end with yeah sorry it is ends with okay so ends with is the command so file name dot ends with i'm saying dot txt if n there are any file ending with txt which is a text file then os dot unlink file name otherwise it will not delete it you can either use it or you can just say for file name in os dot list directory os dot unlink file name it removes all the files irrespective of the extension or if your need is to just delete text files you can you add this one more step which will delete only the text files so this is to do with link unlink so then if you have deleted all the files right all the files within this folder sample data then you can remove that folder using os rmdir right i'll just say sample data so so far what i did i instead of unlink you can still use remove there is nothing wrong in it but i am using unlink because i just also wanted to talk about the function this function okay so till now what i did was i listed all the files in the sample data i put it into a uh, loop and deleted all the files and removed the folder so again this is a two step thing right first i deleted all the files and then delete the directory yeah to simplify this we have one more command called rm tree do you remember copy tree what did copy tree do copy tree copied the all the files and folders the folder structure of the folder and pasted as is in the destination folder right yeah similarly we have rm tree as well what does rm tree do it is used to delete entire folder without deleting files and folder when i use you need to be extra cautious while using this command rm tree what rm tree does is like for example instead of the, doing all these steps if i had just said rm tree of sample data it would simply delete all files and folders within this folder including sample data so in one go the entire folder is deleted got it if you have got this let us uh, move on to the next set of commands if you remember while talking about the session i had spoken about one more module called send to trash i am importing that as well so far whatever you have deleted nothing went into the trash so you cannot recover it easily so now we are talking about safely deleting files and folders and pushing it into trash so for that we need to use this module send to trash i hope all of you know how to create a file how to write into it or how to open and do all the operations so right now i'm writing a code to create a text file called bacon and i've created a file called bacon file and then i am going to write bacon is not a vegetable just for your understanding i'm writing a simple file and then i will close the file so you, this this command will refresh your memory of creating a file and writing into it okay what i'm doing i'm 
creating a new file called bacon.txt which is a text file and and then now the file is open and then now I'm writing into the file right now saying bacon is not a vegetable uh, one line I'm inserting and closing the file now you have this file where do you have this file now I ran this command where do you think this file is created if you are thinking this file is created in the current working directory, then you are right. Wherever you are present, all the commands work in that place. So even this file is created in that folder. Let's say we were still in sample data folder. Right? Let's, yeah, we deleted it just now. Let's think we have created it again. Right? We have created an empty folder called sample data and we have gone into it. When I run these commands, so it will create the file bacon.txt in sample data. Okay. I, I hope your uh, knowledge on uh, handling the file is refreshed. Let's move on to our command. So, how do you use this? Inside that module send to trash, there is a command called send to trash. So send to trash dot send to trash of the file name. What is my file name? Bacon.txt. Right? If I do this, it will remove this file and move it to trash. It is not dealing it permanently. See, right now, so far you have learned deleting a file three ways right single file in three ways one using the remove command from the os module two removing it by using unlink and the third one is sent to trash so these are some of the ways of deleting a file now if you have got this so so far what have we done we have spoken about uh, copying, moving, copying the entire folder, removing the entire folder, and creating directory, uh, checking what is the current working directory, and how to work around it. So this was the first set of commands. So we did it in three uh, steps, like you know, three different uh, sets of commands, and this is one of the important commands which we wanted to talk today. So I will be removing send to trash. Hope you have got what is sent to trash. I will still keep OS and SHUtil because I still might need it. Okay, the next command. Now you know how to create files. You know how to create directories. You can create directories, remove directories, how to uh, transfer files from one directory to another, delete it, copy it, move it, everything, right? Now, there is one awesome command called walk. Okay. You know, in computers, the file system, we refer it to as a tree, right? You might know traversing towards traversing through files and folders. You might have used this multiple times, right? If it is on your windows, you have gone into folders and checked the structure, right? Folder, files, and files and folders, files and folders, whatever. Like it le level might be anything. So you can do the same thing in the command prompt as well using os.walk. Okay, this takes again the command, let's say, I want everything in the root file tree and content. So the root directory, in inside root directory content, I want everything. Okay, I want everything. Let's say content had sample data sample Sample one, 
fold and sample data add bacon and this add multiple txts and this also has the same thing because we had to use copy tree and fold has some of the files because we did copy a few things okay let's say this is the folder structure right now there is content within content there are three yeah four folders sample data sample sample and fold and inside sample there are some files inside uh, sample data there are some files same way for sample one and four so this is how you see in your uh, system right UI not in the command in UI so you want to see all of this using command to do that you say walk so I will say OS dot walk of the path so if I say content it walks content if I say sample data, it walks sample data. And it just not remain within this folder, it goes to subfolders as well, right? Sample data was there and it goes into sample data and lists all the files and folders. If that also has folder, it goes into that folder also and lists that, okay? And this commands gives me three things. Subfolders. files okay and also the folder so it gives me three outputs and it gives me multiple outputs but each output will have three information in it so folder subfolder and file what do I mean by folder which folder are we talking about the content so subfolder is sample data and the file is bacon.txt next content sample file1.txt same thing, file2.txt and if it has, uh, like let's say sample had one more folder, then after two files it will say sample or any number of files until it uh, finds the folder. So the folder becomes sample. Now because it's already in sample, the folder becomes sample and subfold and the file. Okay, it keeps on going, it goes on. So it goes on until all the files and subfolders are listed, right? It walks through each and everything. It traverses through the entire structure, right? So while using this command, we always put it in loop so that we can use the data. If I just say os.work, it lists everything and I'll not be able to do any of the functions, right? Or I cannot use that data. I can just see what the data is. Let's say if I want to use some of the information I'm getting from there, then I will put it in the loop and use it. If you have got this, let me write a sample code which will make your understanding much more clearer. So I said I will be putting it in the for loop. So I'm writing a for loop. I'll say folder name, subfolder name, file names. So I've created three variables folder names subfolders file names in os dot 
walk of content okay now if i want if i print okay if i say for folder names of folders file names in os.walk and uh, print the current folder it prints this command gives me folder every time it runs in the loop it keeps printing the current folder names so let's say similarly you can do it for subfolders and some names if you are just using it and now if you want to delete a particular command you can use that uh, ends with and you can delete it in this loop only so this helps uh, to delete multiple things or copy or move multiple things much easier right so yeah os walk is also an important command it is very useful when you don't want to do multi step functions right you have a requirement where you need to do particular steps and you can just automate it by using this command hope you have got this if you have if it is yes let's move on to zip files okay for zip files you need to import the folder zip file okay zip file is a module again you going to import it and let me write the commands and explain what each one does i'm creating a variable called new zip and in zip file there is a command called zip file okay i'm creating a new zip file name new dot zip okay what i'm doing now this commands creates a new zip folder called new zip you might be wondering now it created the new zip and what does it contain right it does not contain anything at this point okay while creating a zip folder in command prompt you cannot do the way you do it in ui in ui what do we do we select the files and folders which we want to put into zip file folder so we select all uh, if you are using the shortcut you will just say right click and you will say move to zip so it moves all the files and folders you have selected to the zip folder right so but this is little different first you create the folder and put all the files and folders in that so how do you create that uh, folder you using the zip file command i'm saying the zip file command right create a new folder zip file called new zip now the zip file is created now how do i write move files in it there is no move command here what i will do is i will say see now the folder is created new zip and it is in i have taken that thing in my object new zip so whenever i say new zip i know i am talking about that folder so what i am doing new zip dot write okay what i am saying like how you use file dot write right similarly we are using write function here so new zip dot write i'm writing files and folders into it right now i'm doing just files so i'm writing files into it how do i do it so 
I am passing, let's say I want to push three files into that zip folder, I am giving all that name. I'm saying write. Again, I'm telling you, we are in the current working directory, which might be sample data because we had already got into that. And these three files are in that sample data. And we have created a new zip folder called new within sample data, okay? What I'm doing is new zip, which is my folder, dot write, min.csv, test.txt, sim similar.txt. I've given three different files. You can give as many as you want. So all these three files are put into the zip file. It is not moved, it is copy. When you create zip file, it doesn't, does not delete the existing file, right? So I've just, written those copies of these files into that zip folder. Now, and then like you do on file, you will also do on this directory, close. So what I did so far, I created a new zip file called new and I pushed three files into it and I closed. Now I have a zip folder called new with three different files, okay? Now, zip is created. Now, we will see other operations on the zip file. Now, we have a zip file called new, okay? So, I will erase this. Just remember that we have a new zip folder called new and it has three files and I've retain the object because I will be still working on the same object. Okay. Or wait, let me also remove this so that there are no confusion. Now I'll write the next set of commands. So again, you know what is zip file. So zip file of zip file of new zip, new dot zip. Okay, I took that new zip into a new object, example zip. Okay, if I do now, example zip dot name list, it will list all three files which we pushed into new zip. What I did, again, zip file, you know, has a command of zip file. Now, the first one we used to create the zip file. Now, we are using this to read a zip file. So, it might be anything, but in our folder, we have now only have one zip, so I'm taking the same zip. So, I've created a new object example zip and I am reading new zip, right? I'm reading new zip and I read new zip and now I want to do name list. I want to see what all are present within that zip file. So when I do this, it gives me those three files. Got it? This is how we read it. Now, next. Okay, and the, like, hope you got this. Now, I will remove this as well. So, what is the main, like, you know, the main intent of compressing, which is zipping, because to reduce size, right? So, let's see, how do I check if the file size has reduced or not? Right? So, let me do that. So, I'm creating a new object called new info or a variable new info, file info. So, example zip had our new zip in it. So, I'm doing get info. There is a function called get info. So this particular new dot zip 
uh, new.zip has three different files, right? So I'm taking the info of one such file, which is min.csv, okay? How am I doing it? Example zip has my new zip, dot get info. I'm saying get me the information of a particular file. Which file? min.csv. Okay, now all the information of that is in file info. Next, I will do file info dot file size. Okay, I'm saying file info dot file size. It gives me file size in bytes. Okay, similarly, I can do file info dot compressed. Okay, compressed size. Okay, what I'm doing, observe carefully file info dot file size gives me the actual size of that file in bytes and file info dot compressed size will give me the compressed size of that particular file again in bytes that will be your new size for the file okay so file size gives the original size compressed size does give you the compressed size. You can uh, use uh, like you know use these numbers to divide and say how much you have compressed. Usually it compresses up to 20-25% of the size. Okay so it is really useful and try this commands on your interactive notebook to see for yourself. And after doing everything because I've still have my example zip active, I will close it. And why I'm stretching this again? Because it is always required to close those objects. Either you work with file or folder, like zip folder or anything. Once you open, you do all the operations you want to do and close it, right? So that there is no corruption right there is no chance for corruption or invalid references always it is advised to close your object once you are done with that okay so till now what we understood we created a new zip file we added files into it we read the existing zip file we saw what all inside that and we got the file info also. What is the original size? What is the compressed size? And so on. Now, what is left? Let me not close it. I still want example zip itself. So I've not closed it. And now, what we will do is the only operation left on the zip is to extract, right? Now, the zip folder is available. We need to extract that and make it into a normal folder. For that, it is simple. So example zip dot extract. So if you just give this command, it extracts that zip in the current working directory. If you give the path, it goes and extracts into that path. Same like how you do in your uh, like UI, right? similar way. So this is all about zip files. If you have uh, got this, we can move on to the next content. So like I said, never ever forget to close the object. So I close the object and we can close the, this topic as well. Right? So let us move on to the last phase of today's session is about exceptions, accessions, and uh, traceback. So let's little brush up about exceptions. What are exceptions? 
yes exceptions are something which is raised when a code fails to run right or fails to execute if there is syntactical error or any error right within your code when it reaches that line it throws you an exception what is exception it is telling us that it could not completely you know successfully complete the code execution it has abruptly stopped that's an exception so how have you handled it so far you have used try and accept uh, and then uh, you have put that in the try block and you have written whatever you want to do in accept right if you remember all that let's move on to what exactly is user exception right so uh, we say there is a saying that 90% of the work might be coding but the rest in part is debugging it is very important to use some of this concept which will help you debug your code why because while developing the code it you might have uh, like you know you might know each and everything what you have done for some time so you might think debugging is easy if something is not working you know exactly where that code is you get back and fix it okay but that is not the case in the real world you create it it's not that you get error only now after few months few days few years there might be errors after let's say after a few months you have completely forgotten about this particular code you have written because you are working on others as well right now you don't have any idea and if you want to come back this code and try to debug and fix something you will have to understand each and every line again which might take longer time right and sometimes you may not have that time luxury to do that so what we do you one of the ways you know is commands right but sometimes we want to make our system false fools proof right no matter because of the user error we don't want to end up in exceptions so we create user exceptions and similarly i'll talk about logging and assertions and everything which will help you uh, put certain steps in place so that some of the known exceptions can be avoided okay i'm not talking about the unknown exception it is still have to uh, you know you still have to handle it with a try block but there are some things which we know uh, can happen can occur so there we go with user exceptions let's see how to do it okay so if i use the command raise exception wherever i run this command it raise the exception it's as simple as that we have to use the word raise exception of message it raises that exception simple now i will write a code and tell you how this can be used meanwhile you can also open your interactive notebook and start typing the command and see for yourself so that you now it becomes easier to understand while i walk you through that i am defining a new function i i know you know already know how to create functions and uh, procedures so i am creating a function box print which takes three variables which is symbol width and height if length of the symbol is not equal to 1 i 
I'm raising an exception saying symbol must be single character string single character okay the next exception i'm raising is if width is less than or equal to 2 again i will raise an exception saying width should be greater than 2 okay and then I say if height is less than or equal to 2 again similar thing raise exception should be greater than 2 and then I will have my actual function for i in range of 5 to minus 2 print symbol let's say I am doing some of the functions Okay, some of the functions and then let me continue here I hope this is visible to you in the try block again even though it is user exception you still have to put it in try block so I am calling box for box print of star to say one okay two four and I will accept exception as error print string of error okay so what I'm doing right here is I've created a function box print with three variables symbol width and height okay what I'm trying to do is this is I want to do some functionality I want to print it on the screen right by taking symbol width and height I want to print some symbols okay that is my requirement and functionality so I'm creating that before I write the actual functionality which is for loop in this case I will write all my exceptions first okay if length of symbol which is this is not equal to 1 then if there is no symbol I cannot print it or if I have multiple symbols again it will not make any sense so I want to print a particular symbol so I am checking the length of it it should be equal to 1 if it is not I am raising an exception see this is nothing to do with syntactical error or something if I have not done it right it will not give the expected output which is not error from the system standpoint but from the user standpoint it's an error right so we want to even overcome such issues that's why we are raising a user exception raise exception we have raised it similarly I'm checking for the other two variables also width is not equal to 2 and height is not less than or equal to 2 right the similar way I've raised the exceptions so I've written this and I've written the actual function after raising or creating all the exceptions that is fine now in my main part I am talking about 
I'm putting, I'm calling this function within the try block because I know I want to handle an exception if there are any. So I'm saying within try box print of, uh, I'm printing my symbol is star and two comma four, right? Now two is error. I'm saying less if width is less than or equal to two, raise an exception. So I'm testing to raise, to test that I'm giving an error here. So I'm giving two as an input and four for height, height is still fine. And in the except part, I'm accepting an uh, exception as error. I've like, you know, taken because I don't want to write as an exception, exception. So I wanted a shorter form, shorter one to write. So I took it as, I created an alias called ERR, and then I'm printing the error. And I'm printing it because, you know, it may not be in the string format. So I'm converting that error into string and printing that. Now, when I run this, what happens? Yes, there is an exception raised saying symbol must, uh, sorry, uh, width, width should be greater than two. So you will get that exception here. Understood how to create a user exception? Why do we do it and how do we do it? Now let's move on to the next part. Now I will remove this because there is no space on the board. I might still continue with the same thing. So in the real world scenario, I was talking about uh, handling these exceptions and using it to debugging, right? So if you do just this, it will print on the console after running it. And if you want to refer to it later, you may not have it, right? So what we usually do is we write these exceptions into a file instead of printing it on the console, we write inside a file so that whenever we want, we can get back to that file and see what exceptions were raised and what was the issue and it will help us debug better. So how do we do it? Uh, so when you all might know, when there is an exception raised, it gives you a trace back. What is trace back? It gives all the information which will tell you where exactly this exception was raised. Now, when I did in the previous example, when the width was two, so it came to that line where I was checking the width length, right? So it tells me this is the exact place where this exception was created. How it is helpful? Trace back. Traceback is helpful because I know exactly which part of my code or which line in my code did not execute. So I can directly get into that line and fix it, right? So simpler. So that is why traceback is used. So again, traceback, we have it as a module and we can import it whenever we want to use it. So import traceback gives me all the functions of traceback. Again, I'm creating a file because I want to put it in a file and you all know how to create it. So I'm not talking about that.
Okay. So what am I doing here? So again, I'm raising a user exception, raise exception, this is an error. Simple statement. And in accept block, I'm first, I'm creating a file. I'm creating a file error info.txt. Okay? And then, like, because I'm uh, talking about this command, I might have written as error info, but uh, in real world, we write the exact uh, name, uh, which will indicate us which program f failed and which part of the program failed. So we write the file name accordingly. And then uh, the error file dot write. Now I've opened the file and I'm writing whatever exception I've got. How do I know whatever exception I've got? See, the in traceback module, there is a function called format exe, right? Whenever there is an uh, exception, it will all be collected. And then when I use this format exe, it uh, gives me all the exceptions which has been raised. So I'm going to write in that file. That's why I'm writing, like saying write, so that uh, that exception, this is an error exception, is written into that file and I'm closing it. And I'm printing for the user understanding that the traceback info was written into the file. So that's what I'm doing. Like this, you can push your exceptions into the file. I will allow um, for a moment for you to look at this command and then I will erase and move on to assertion. I will also write some commands so it becomes easier to explain. Uh, don't worry, I will talk about what exactly is your assertion. So let me write this and then talk about that. Okay, what is an assertion? So you understood what is an exception, right? When, uh, like there are some things which you don't wa want a certain way, you create a user exception, like we saw in our previous example. Now, assertion is used for sanity check. You all know, or you might have already used some of the static variables in your programming, right? You create one uh, static variable at the beginning or in between in, uh, in programming and you will be using that particular variable multiple places, thinking that that is static. Sometimes while doing the programming, you might accidentally change the value of that static variable or you can, uh, like if you delete, you get an exception saying that variable is not found, so you don't have to worry. But that variable is still there, but the value is not what you are thinking it is to be, right? So again, that will not give the expected output. It will still give the output because there is no error programmatically, and it will still run and gives whatever output based on the inputs it has taken right but user for user it might be an error like the first step was exception now sometimes for static variables and something you can even create assertions how do you create it by using 
like this. Let's say I had a static variable called pod bay, which is open. Okay, pod bay is open. Like the value of the pod bay variable is open. So I'm assuming that throughout my program, wherever I call pod bay, it should be, the value should be open, right? So before using, right? Before using this variable within my program every time, I might create an assertion to check if it is open. Like, how do I do it? There is a word called assert. A-S-S-E-R-T, assert, assert, what am I asserting? The variable pod bay. So I'm saying if assert pod bay is equal to, is equal to open. If it should be open, right? Like because I said the value should be open all the time. So I'm checking if the value is open. If the value is not open, the pod bay, it will give you an error message saying the pod bay should be open. Right? You might be thinking, why will I use assert? I will simply use if. If you want to do it, go ahead and do it. But keep the time and space complexity, which you have all learned in programming, optimizing your program. So if you are not worried about it, fine, go ahead and use if else. If you don't want to use if else, and if you want to use assert, yeah, it is available by doing this. Assert, pod bay, open. Soon after this, I can break the program and stop it. Right? So, so that it doesn't not run further and then uh, create unexpected outputs. So I can do this and again I can capture this and debug. Cool? Got what is assertion and how to use it? Let's move on to the final topic for the day, logging. Okay, what is logging, right? Logging again is messaging, which helps the developer to debug better. When I say debug better, we can add login anywhere in our program, any number of times in our program, we add all those, like comments, we add this. See, comments is seen within the code, right? You need to get into the code and see those. Let's say what you want to see certain things in the console, not in the code, in the console, then you can use login. There are different kinds of login. I'll quickly talk about each one and end the session for today. And for this, you need to import that module, logging. I'll write each uh, logging and then explain what exactly it is. You cannot see after this, so I'm writing in the next line.
do try all of this in your interactive uh, notebook so that you understand this better because you will exactly see the output. Okay, in login, there are different levels. Uh, there are different levels of login. Debugging, debug, and you have info, you have warning, you have error, you have critical. Basically different types of login, okay? How do we use logging? First, you will import the module logging, so it gives you all the functions. And then, before logging, so as soon as you import, you do the basic config. How do you want the logging to be seen in the console, right? So what I'm doing is login basic config, logging.basic config level is logging.debug. I'm saying this is the config for debugging. So similarly, you need to do for whatever level you are using. You need to specify what level are you formatting. So I'm right now I'm formatting debug. So that's why I've said logging.debug. And then the format is I want the current date and time because it's easy if I know what time this has started and what time uh, the error occurred, exception occurred, or you know, the info, there was information, there was warning, there was some critical, so all that, right? So I want my date and time, and then level name. What is the level of logging? Is it debug, is it info, is it error, is it critical, all that, and message. Message is what I'm going to send within those functions, right? So that is that. So I do the basic config, so I'm not confused when I see a login. I know exactly what it is because it is in the way I want to read it, right? So I did that. Next, how do you log? By just using login.the level, login.debug message, login.info message, and same way for warning, error, and critical. Okay, now let's talk where do we use it. Lo debug is a generic term to going through the code in case of an error or it's not error I want to see what's happening within my code that is also debugging right like similarly what you have debug mode in your IDE right so I'm saying logging to debug uh, the program started now so uh, the what will be my output there will be date and time date time and then say debug, there is message. So I know a program started at this date and time, right? I can put this, then started, and we are in this step. So at, before starting each sub functions, I can have debug message so that I know the code has already gone to that level. So if it fails, I know this is working fine. So this is from this part, it is not working. So to, it's easy to uh, go to that chunk of the code and start debugging, right? So that is debug. The info, so in, if you don't want to use debug, you can still use info. Info is like yeah, started, now it is waiting for resources, it is ended, and it is moving to the next module of the code, all of those. And warning, wherever, because you know, uh, you like, you know, expected exceptions, right? So before those things, you can add this. There can be an error after this line or in this line. So I might use warning there. And error, in my catch block, accept block, right? Try and accept. So in my accept block, I can put this logging.error and the message, there was an error. And this is the file where you can find the trace back. So I can give that message so it's easy for the user like or the developer later to read it and get to that point. Similarly, I can use critical also. You might ask, why do I need it? Uh, like, can't I run the program without uh, like, you know, exception, a session and login? Yes, you can still do it. Why are we doing it? To keep your code clean and make it easy for debugging when you want to do it. So use these things to make your code really look 
good and also very easy to debug, not just for you, for anyone who is looking into your code. So by doing all this, your program can be neat and functional as well. And thank you so much for listening to the session. Hope you have understood all the concepts. If not, rewind and watch it again. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.